back, you know, KLH was founded in the late fifties and late fit course. And it was founded by Henry close, which I'm sure you're familiar with that name. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, then the company really had its heyday throughout the 1960s and was well known for building, uh, acoustic suspension type loudspeakers. And, and for, very... for folks that aren't in the know, that's a sealed box. Yes, that is right. correct. As opposed to say, maybe a base reflex enclosure, which is uh, largely popular today. Uh, uh, acoustic suspension is a really a kind of a version of a sealed uh, sealed box loudspeaker. But uh, that type of that type of loudspeaker design um, was very popular uh, in the late fifties and throughout the sixties, and was still popular even through the seventies. Uh, so it was kind of, <clears throat> once we got into the eighties or so that it kind of fell out of favor, um, and really, uh, base reflex type enclosures more or less became all the rage, but it's really, um, uh, a very viable technology in a lot of ways. Um, it has, uh, several advantage advantages over base reflex enclosures. I think particularly given the fact that just over the, over the decades, every decades, uh, music seems to get better and better, you know, every it really 10 does. years. It's, so. it's, it's crazy. And also okay. wonderful the, the way that technology has allowed people to really elevate, you know, not only the, the process of creating music, but also of recording it, producing it exactly. and then listening to it. So, and I just really feel, you know, in the, last 15 or 20 years, particularly the, uh, the quality of the recordings have just come such a long way and have gotten so much better. And just the, the, uh, uh, percentage of people that are just getting it right today, as opposed to not right, right. just even continues to get better. Right. Uh, and I feel because of that acoustic suspension has a place in all of that, because technically speaking, uh, acoustic suspension is a more accurate solution. I mean, it's really the only one that can take an input signal and actually recreate it properly. Um, a base reflex for a variety of reasons is compromised in a few ways in the really extreme low bass section. And that's where recording engineers seem to be getting it right today. Right. And that's how, that's why I kind of feel those designs have become somewhat compromised is just simply because the recordings have somewhat matured, you know, kind of well past their capability, so to speak, or what they really seem to do well. Right. Uh, well, let's, so, let's talk about that for just a second then let's, let's dig okay. into acoustic suspension versus bass reflex. And, uh, you know, I, I'm far from, uh, you know, a speaker designer, um, or a physicist, uh, as far as sound engineering goes. Uh, but so in a bass reflex, uh, environment, you have typically some type of device that's a port or a passive radiator, right? Something where yes. an air column mm -hmm. can vibrate or a membrane vibrates. Right. And, uh, exactly. it seems like the primary use for that is for, uh, additional output, correct? So yes, people are looking to really right. shore up the, the low end. However, once you hit that port tuning and frequency drops below that, um, you know, a number of things happen, right? So you start losing control of the cone because you don't have any kind of, uh, of um, air cushion to help control that, right? So I think they call that unloading underneath port tuning or something like that. Yep. Um, but then also, don't you get into phase coherency issues as you move below port tuning as well? So your phase alignment yes, you do. becomes There's smeared, timing issues. Right? There's timing issues. When you stop and think about it, you know, there's a finite amount of time that it takes uh, a signal to propagate from the active driver through the enclosure and out the port or passive radiator, radiator. Uh, and that also requires a certain amount of time. So there's always this kind of buildup and there's also a time for it to settle down because it doesn't react instantaneously. By the way, you understand this as, as, better, as well or better than I do, by the way. <laughs> But <laughs> you'll have my application tomorrow. <laughs> I was going to say you want a job, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, a base reflex enclosure. It's fine 
typically down to the tuning frequency of the loudspeaker, which on average for your, you know, your typical floor standing loudspeakers probably are, you know, usually around 40 Hertz. Mm -hmm, that makes sense. And, and for folks that and, don't know, 40 Hertz is about one octave above what's typically considered kind of the yeah. limit of human hearing. And below that you get, uh, what do they call it? Infrasonic sound that you can feel and there's vibration, but yes. there's about an octave of, of sound there. Right. And to your point, uh, uh, below that frequency, you know, bass reflex enclosures, you know, basically begin to unload. Uh, the, the, uh, the port isn't really serving any function anymore other than the fact it provides a hole in the box. Correct. <laughs> so, there's, right. so there's really no air spring or any type of governor that's placed on the loudspeaker transducer itself. So it has a, uh, in a manner, it kind of becomes unstable, if you will, at those frequencies. Right. And that's a kind of, a, yeah. So that's exactly just kind of the point that I, that I just try to make when I talk to people about that is it's, it's that area, which is kind of becomes troublesome, uh, in terms of accuracy, um, uh, and just base textures and, and kind of like you alluded to timing issues and things like that, they all get out of whack. And, um, uh, uh, and while acoustic suspension may not be able to deliver the same level of output that a, that a base reflex enclosure does, the output that you did, do get is going to be much better and more accurate, uh, mm -hmm. uh, just simply because it's not compromised in the same way that a base reflex enclosure is. Yeah. And I, you know, I think where the rubber meets the road for a lot of people too is, uh, and, and I and I think people really consider, you know, the 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 seal versus ported to just to use the vernacular. Um, right. it, it really from a, a a loudness, they they want as much output as they can get, yep. and, and and completely understandable. The, the quality kind of takes a back seat, and uh, people I think most often will see this when they're dealing with subwoofers, and you know, they're like, oh, I'm gonna port tune down to 19 hertz, and but then you know they'll hit that sub with, you know, a 10 Hertz tone with 2000 Watts and it goes, bam, <laughs> it's, just, it's done. Right. <laughs> it's just, it just kills it. Um, right. So yeah, I mean, you gotta be really, really careful when, when you do that, but it's exciting for me to see sealed enclosures because I, I, I really love acoustic suspension. It's, it's my favorite way to go. And you, you absolutely, right. out, absolutely lose out on some of that low end output. However, I think the sound quality more than makes up for that. And if you are missing out on that volume, there are other ways that you can deal with, with getting back those decibels, right? Um, it might yeah, cost absolutely. you a little bit more in, uh, in amplification, right? You might sure. need to dump yeah. double the power to get three more decibels out of the, out of, out of your speakers on the low end. But to me, eliminating, you know, the potential issues with, uh, you know, drivers unloading under port tuning and then particularly the, the phase coherence, coherency issues that go away, it, it makes tuning your system, I mean, infinitely easier, right? And, right. Yeah. and if you're a critical listener, um, I don't know that, you know, going with a base reflex system really is the right way to go. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so just real quick, one of the other ad advantages is, uh, is the rate of attenuation, uh, an acoustic suspension sealed box, um, uh, attenuates below the cutoff frequency of the loudspeaker. Um, uh, it's a much shallower cutoff for a closed box. Um, in engineering terms, uh, base reflex enclosures roll off about 24 dB per octave. So okay, you're talking sure. about that's 24. That's like this. Yeah. yeah. All right. So if they cut off at 40 Hertz, you're down 24 dB at 20 Hertz, which is, you know, you're, you're almost gone. turned off at that point. Yeah, it's gone. Whereas a sealed enclosure rolls off at 12 dB per octave. Uh, so at 20 Hertz, you'd only be down, say, approximately 12 dB or so. Uh, but where that really becomes important is uh, in flexibility of room placement. Since you don't have that kind of turn on, kind of turn off characteristic you have in a base reflex, where it's a shallower roll off with the sealed box, your room modes 
in your listening room uh, uh, with a bass reflex, you know, you kind of either get this, these room modes reinforce, reinforce the output of the bass reflex enclosure above 40 hertz, or right. they reinforce frequencies below 40 hertz that aren't there. So you kind of either get this, this really loud kind of punchy uh, characteristic, or you don't really get a lot of help at all because the loudspeaker is basically turned off. Uh, sealed box doesn't quite behave in that manner. That makes a lot of sense. It, totally. There's a little bit more seamless. It's not perfect, of course, but it's much better than the base reflex enclosure.